So if you've spent any amount of time on the internet, then I'm sure you've all heard a former AOA member Kwan Mina by now. Mina accused Jimin of mentally tormenting her, preventing her from seeing her father before he passed. All from the post from former member Mina, talking about her frustration over what a member of AOA said to her when her father passed. She deleted and she put it on about this whole case. Mina's Instagram posts have been sparked up in controversy yet again. Ever since she came up with her bullying allegations against her groupmate Shin Ji Min in July of 2020, this troubled star has been making headline news constantly. With stories of her concerning social media behavior and her struggles with mental health issues plastered across the internet for all to see. But as the story continues to evolve, the narrative surrounding the situation has really changed. And Mina, who was originally considered the sympathetic victim of bullying, is now seen as the villain of the entire story. While Jimin and the rest of AOA, who were originally cancelled for their alleged bullying, are now regarded as the actual victims. So what happened? What caused the public to end up completely switching sides? Well, in this video, we will be doing a deep dive into all of the events surrounding Kwon Mina, Shin Ji Min, and the rest of AOA, and taking a look at how cancel culture played a part in ending one of K-pop's most iconic girl groups. But before we proceed with the video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Rosetta Stone. Have you ever had to wait days just to find a sub version of your favorite Korean show? Or wanted to sing along to your favorite K-pop songs only to realize you don't know the lyrics? We are queens and kings so well, if so, then Rosetta Stone might be the perfect solution for you. Rosetta Stone is a language learning app that you can use on your phone or your computer, and it contains amazing courses for 24 different languages. Currently, I'm using Rosetta Stone to learn Korean and Chinese. Now, when it comes to Korean, I'm very much still a beginner. While for Chinese, I am actually fluent, and I really just wanted to brush up on my skills. Thankfully, Rosetta Stone has different courses to cater to all of these different skill levels. Additionally, I think it's great how the app doesn't just teach you how to read and write, it also makes use of true accent technology to help you with your pronunciation. Which is so important if you're actually planning to use a language in real life. But best of all, Rosetta Stone is currently offering all of you amazing viewers a huge discount on their lifetime subscription. So be sure to check them out, links will be in the description. And huge thanks once again to Rosetta Stone for supporting this channel. Alright, so just to give you guys a quick background, Ace of Angels, also known as AOA, is a girl group that debuted under FNC Entertainment back in 2012. And they're best known for their sexy and sporty and kind of cute concepts. One moment they would dress up as like sporty lifeguards, and then the next moment they would be like really sexy spies. And if you can't tell, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Anyways, they were one of the top girl groups back in the mid-2010s, and they really dominated the charts with songs such as Mini Skirt, Short Hair, Like a Cat, and Heart Attack. The group originally consisted of 8 members, including Mina, who was the sub-rapper and vocalist, as well as Jimin, who acted as the leader and the main rapper. However, starting in 2016, members started leaving the group one by one, and by May of 2019, Mina had also decided to quit AOA, with FNC releasing a vague statement saying that she had left to pursue her dreams. However, even back then, there were already some possible signs of tension between Mina and her group. Because as soon as she left AOA, she immediately deleted all of her posts from her time in AOA. And you know what? A few Hawkeye netizens actually spotted this, and so they started speculating that she wanted to delete her past or that she wanted to forget her group, but of course, nobody believed them at the time, and these comments were mostly just disregarded as baseless rumors. It wasn't until the 3rd of July 2020 that everyone realized these rumors were anything but baseless. 
It all started when Mina responded to a hate message on Instagram by revealing that she had actually been bullied by an AOA member for over a decade. In particular, she described an incident where this member showed her no sympathy after her father passed away. According to Mina, this member dragged her aside and basically told her to suck it up and stop crying because she was quote, ruining the mood. However, Mina then went on to reveal that this member's own father eventually also passed away. And as a result, the member ended up apologizing to Mina. Now knowing the internet, this post unsurprisingly became headline news and everyone started trying to identify who this bully might have been. Eventually, netizens came to the conclusion that the bully must have been Jimin because she was the only other member aside from Mina who had lost her father. As suspicion began piling up, Jimin released an Instagram post that literally just said the words fiction. Perhaps she was trying to deny the rumors, but all this did was confirm that Mina's posts were definitely about her, which just made her look all the more suspicious. And so netizens, now convinced that Jimin was in fact a bully, started circulating so-called evidence of Jimin's bullying, ranging from videos of Jimin supposedly glaring at Mina to rumors of how Jimin bullied other FNC trainees. And as the evidence grew, so did the backlash. It was almost like a vicious cycle, and before long, Jimin's YouTube channel and Instagram were completely flooded with hate comments and accusations, and these netizens were demanding Jimin apologize to Mina and step down as AOA's leader. Honestly, I've seen a lot of K-pop idols get cancelled throughout my time here on YouTube, but I don't think I've ever seen a cancellation quite as bad as this. Like, I literally remember getting spammed with messages and comments just because I didn't unfollow Jimin. Like, people were actually getting labeled as bully supporters and bystanders if they didn't make some sort of video or post calling out Jimin. And I think that it's this sort of peer pressure that really led a lot of people to just jump on the bandwagon, which obviously made the entire cancellation even worse. Sensing how serious the situation was becoming, Jimin and the remaining AOA members immediately went to pay Mina a visit, presumably so that they could make amends and resolve their issues. However, the meetup didn't go as planned, and Mina later claimed that Jimin had an angry attitude and just gave an insincere apology. However, she said that she would accept this apology anyways and will not be mentioning this incident going forward. Needless to say, everybody praised Mina for her kind response and for being the bigger person, while Jimin was just further condemned for not apologizing properly. Hoping to salvage her reputation, Jimin released an official statement on Instagram the next day, where she admitted that she had wanted to show the best sides of AOA to the world, and in the process, she might have neglected the members' emotions. However, this apology was not well received, and later that day, FNC announced that Jimin's contract had been terminated and that she was officially retiring from the industry. Netizens were happy to see that justice had been served. The bully had gotten their comeuppance and the victim Mina said that she was ready to put the situation behind her. What a great ending to a tragic situation. And guys, that concludes the story of AOA's bullying controversy. I'll see you guys soon. Except this situation was just getting started because despite saying just a day ago that she was ready to move on, Mina unexpectedly clapped back at Jimin's apology, revealing details of Jimin's intimate life and claiming that all eyes and ears were on Jimin's side on the day of the meetup. Of course, knowing the internet, everybody started speculating what Mina meant by all eyes and ears were on Jimin's side and interpreted that to mean that all of the other members had supported Jimin in bullying Mina. And things only got worse from there when over the next few days, Mina started unfollowing the AOA members one by one. And oh my gosh, like I cannot even emphasize enough just how much importance people were putting in Mina's every move. Every time she unfollowed a member, it was like judgment day for that member. They would automatically receive a ton of hate. And things were so bad that many of them actually had to private their accounts. Sohyun in particular received the most backlash, not only because she was the most popular, but also because she was Jimin's closest friend in the group. 
So what was Mina saying about all of this? Well, initially, Mina released a statement saying that aside from Jimin, none of the other members bullied her. However, on the 6th of August, she kind of changes her tune and releases a statement accusing Sohyun and Chanmi in particular of being apathetic bystanders. And things got even worse for Sohyun when on the 8th of July, Mina posted an SH photo to Instagram where she insinuated that not just Jimin but also the CEO of FNC and Sohyun were to blame for her SH. With Jimin now out of the picture, Sohyun, who had already been facing immense criticism from the public, became the main culprit for this controversy, with many netizens demanding that she step down from her drama day and night. Meanwhile, one of Mina's fans decided to take some concrete action by filing an official complaint on Mina's behalf, prompting the Gangnam police to launch an official investigation into this issue. Everybody hoped that this would finally lead to some clear answers and allow those responsible to be brought to justice. However, much to everybody's surprise, Mina actually rejected the investigation, stating that she didn't want to make the situation any bigger, which is pretty contradictory to say the least, especially since she was the one that repeatedly brought up this issue even after Jimin's retirement. Regardless, most people remained supportive as they wanted to respect Mina's decision and allow her to truly move on. And indeed, over the next few months, Mina seemed to be making amazing progress and she even managed to secure a few promotional activities and magazine shoots. Most people were really happy for Mina and hoped that she would continue on her road to recovery. But of course, this period of peace didn't last long. While the vast majority of people truly wanted the best for Mina, there were of course the odd trolls and haters as well as a few extreme Jimin fans who left some pretty despicable and hateful comments. Which hey, it's the internet so I guess that's to be expected. But to someone like Mina, these comments were extremely triggering to her already fragile emotional state. And by December, it seemed like these comments had finally tipped her over the edge when she released a post calling Jimin's fans murderers. And it was from this point onwards that Mina began her downward descent. Over the next 5 months, her mental health seemingly spiraled out of control. She began responding to and interacting with haters and trolls, and she also began posting more and more, sometimes up to multiple times a day, about the already retired Jimin. Now, I don't think I need to go through each and every single post Mina made because frankly, we'll be here all day. So I'm just gonna go through some of the main controversies that happened. Okay, so on March the 7th, which actually happens to be my birthday, Mina reveals during a live stream that she had been SA'd by someone who was pretty well known. She said, 이름 들으면 다알 정도로 유명한 사람이었어요. Of course, everyone expressed sympathy for Mina's situation. But as expected, there were some netizens who took things too far. They took what Mina said to mean that the assailant must have been a celebrity. And so, they decided to accuse various random K-pop artists of being Mina's abuser. Thankfully, before the situation escalated further and before people started getting cancelled, Mina made a follow-up live stream where she clarified that the perpetrator was not a celebrity but rather just a well-known Yujin student from her neighborhood. However, this explanation didn't satisfy some live stream viewers who claimed that Mina's stories didn't align since a neighborhood bully was unlikely to be famous enough that quote, everyone will know who he is as Mina previously claimed. As suspicion increased, comments interrogating Mina and pointing out her inconsistencies started flooding in. And Mina, who was seemingly unable to handle all the criticism, then abruptly shifted the conversation by stating that the real perpetrator here was actually Jimin of all people. Yeah, this did not go down well with some netizens, who not only claimed that she was lying about the entire essay, but also believed that she was using Jimin to deflect from criticism. 
Which, okay, I have so many thoughts to unpack here. So firstly, I don't agree with how the netizens accused Mina of lying about SA, especially since they weren't even there. Um, but on the other hand, I also don't agree with how the netizens went out and accused people of SA without any evidence. So I really don't agree with anything the netizens did here. But I will say that it was definitely strange that Mina brought up Jimin, even though this essay had nothing to do with the original bull bullying scandal. But okay, moving on, the next big controversy took place in April, when Mina posted a bloody SH photo to the internet. Thankfully, the photo was quickly taken down by Instagram, but not before hundreds and thousands of people saw it. I mean, I remember seeing it, and honestly, the image was so disturbing that it still sticks in my brain today. So I can only imagine how triggering a photo like that would have been to people who actually have mental health issues. Needless to say, this incident prompted many people to complain to Instagram. The backlash was so great that Instagram actually had to issue an official response. Response. But in this official response, they stated that they would not be terminating Mina's account because they wanted Instagram to be a platform to allow those struggling with mental health issues to quote, share their experiences and seek help. And so Mina's account stayed up, and four days later, she uploaded a follow-up post where she explained the real reasons behind her decision to upload the graphic image. And I honestly wish I was joking, but she actually said, and I quote, Why did I upload the picture of my wrist? I wanted Jimin's friends to see. Maybe they'll let her know. Essentially, she says in the post that she's been trying to contact Jimin but to no avail, and so she posted the photo in order to get Jimin's attention, which is honestly just... Ugh. I don't even know what to say. It's such a destructive way of going about things, to be honest. But her attempts to contact Jimin didn't stop there. Throughout the month of May, she was spotted leaving comments on Jimin's Instagram, which, by the way, had been inactive for almost 10 months at this point. And she even began following many of Jimin's friends, including Cheetah and Heji. This was when many people began to feel like Mina was taking things too far and almost turning into a bully herself. And so Netizen started asking Mina to get off the internet and seek help. But Mina continued remaining active on social media. And sure enough, it wasn't long before her reputation took yet another hit. In June, Mina posted a photo with her new boyfriend, Yu. Initially, fans were happy that Mina had found love, and they were glad that Mina was finally posting something positive for once. However, it wasn't long before this too started getting negative attention. A netizen claiming to be Yu's former girlfriend's friend accused Yu of cheating on her friend with Mina and claimed that Mina was actually aware of the cheating but still decided to get with him anyways. This scandal quickly gained attention and many started criticizing Mina for stealing you, which to be honest, I found pretty unfair. I mean, you is an adult and he was the one that decided to cheat, but as the more famous person in the couple, as well as, dare I say it, a woman, Mina obviously got the brunt of the criticism. She initially denied the accusations and claimed that Yu had broken up with his girlfriend before they got together. But screenshots proved otherwise, and in the end, the couple broke up just 9 days after publicly revealing their relationship. Mina then posted an apology to Yu's ex-girlfriend, followed by a 1 hour live stream on Instagram, where she claimed that she'd be getting off social media. <laughs> However, even these apologies ended up backfiring, as Mina was criticized for deflecting attention away from her own scandal by continuously bringing up AOA. In particular, Mina brought up Jimin's intimate life once again, which prompted netizens to accuse Mina of being a hypocrite for slut shaming when she herself was engaging in arguably worse behaviors. By this point, it had been more than a year since Mina's scandal first started, yet there was still no resolution in sight. Many people were honestly beginning to get sick and tired of Mina and her constant antics. And I hate to put it this way, but people simply lost interest in the entire scandal. They moved on to newer and more exciting topics, and interest in Mina began to wane.
That was until the 29th of July, when Mina made breaking news once again. This time for attempting to take her own life. Thankfully, she was discovered in time and was able to make a full recovery. For the first time in months, people banded together to offer Mina support. They were reminded that Mina was someone who was dealing with severe mental health issues, and as much as people didn't agree with her actions, they didn't want to lose yet another K-pop idol to suicide. During this time, Mina's Instagram, which was the source of most of her controversies, was also finally deactivated. Everyone hoped that this would signify a new start for this troubled artist, and that she would finally seek help and stay off the internet. But alas, just 6 days later, on the 4th of August, Mina was back at it on Instagram, responding to haters, speaking about Jimin, etc, etc. You guys get the idea. And so, whatever newfound concern that netizens had for Mina immediately vanished, and she was accused of not taking her recovery seriously. Then on the 1st of September, Mina appeared on a YouTube channel called Jum Jum TV, where she opened up about various difficult topics. Perhaps she was expecting to receive support and sympathy from the audience, but all this show did was give people even more reasons to criticize Mina. She faced backlash for talking about Jimin and AOA yet again, <laughs> and people also didn't like how she mentioned the late K-pop star Seo Lee. But the most controversial part of the show was when Mina claimed that her deceased father was actually a very abusive man. <laughs> 있었거든요, and that she hated him so much that she constantly wished he would die. This was obviously a very sad story, except there was one huge problem. If you recall, the entire AOA bullying scandal started because Jimin allegedly didn't allow Mina to grieve during her father's death. Of course, studies have shown that abused children can develop a level of attachment to their abusive parents, so it isn't always as simple as either loving or hating that parent. But at the same time, netizens also pointed out how Mina had used her supposed love for her father as the main reason for exposing Jimin. She had written in length multiple times about how close she was with her father, how much her father's death impacted her, and how angry she was at Jimin for not understanding her grief. That was the entire basis and starting point of the scandal. And now, the story simply wasn't adding up. Everyone obviously started pointing out this gaping contradiction, and comments calling Mina a professional victim and a pathological liar started flooding in. But just when it looked like things couldn't get any worse for her, Dispatch dropped a bombshell that completely obliterated any remaining trust people had in Mina's story. On the 8th of September, Dispatch exposed various text messages and transcripts between Mina and the AOA members and staff. And this new evidence completely disproved everything Mina had said about Jimin and the rest of AOA. The first series of text messages showed Mina and Jimin's interactions in the months of April and May 2020, which was actually right after Jimin's father had passed away. In these texts, Mina can be seen comforting Jimin and it seemed like the two had a great relationship. Mina even mentions how Jimin apologized to her and how thankful she was for this apology, which was definitely a far cry from Mina's later claims that Jimin never sincerely apologized. It was just two months after this seemingly cordial interaction that Mina came up with her expose against Jimin. And if you recall, Jimin and the other AOA members then went to meet Mina to reconcile their differences. Now, Mina at the time claimed that Jimin was insincere and had an angry attitude, and that all of the AOA members were on Jimin's side. However, it turned out Dispatch actually had the transcripts from this meeting, and well, they showed a very different story. 
Based on the transcripts, it seemed like Jimin genuinely did not remember what happened, but still tried to apologize anyways. Furthermore, the other AOA members were not just blindly supporting Jimin, rather they were trying to mediate the conversation and be as neutral as possible. The next set of chat logs were obtained from November of 2020 and onwards, which showed Mina repeatedly harassing and threatening the then already retired Jimin. And if all of this wasn't bad enough, AOA staff members also came forward with text messages that showed that Mina was actually pretty demanding. She would message staff at all hours of the day and expect them to help her with her personal errands, such as booking her mother's appointments. As you might expect, all this new evidence instantly erased any remaining sympathy people had for Mina. And I don't even think I can overstate how much backlash Mina was getting from the public, who felt like they had been completely manipulated and deceived. In response, Mina released a statement where she claimed to have witnesses and receipts to prove her side of the story. And she also requested Dispatch to release the full chat logs from the beginning to the end. But of course, this did little to convince the public. And Mina eventually ended up deleting all of her posts and has been inactive on social media ever since. Sadly, even though AOA's name has technically been cleared, their reputation as a group remains somewhat tainted, and many of the members have chosen to keep a low profile even today. Jimin in particular hasn't made any public appearances since her retirement, and the last update we have gotten was actually from her neighbors, who claim that she now lives as a recluse. But yeah, that's where the story ends for now. Overall, I think we can all agree that this is a tragic situation with no real winners. Obviously, throughout this entire scandal, Mina's behavior was extremely erratic and impulsive, and it's possible that she and Jimin did in fact have some small disagreements in the past, but it seemed like she also misinterpreted many events and might have taken things way too personally. Nobody knows, but either way, it's clear that she has a lot of issues and she definitely needs to seek professional help. But whilst it's easy to blame Mina for everything that happened, I think we as the public also need to take a look at ourselves. Because I would argue that we were actually the ones who were most responsible for AOA's downfall. I mean, let's not forget that Mina's original post was actually anonymous. It didn't even seem like she was planning on exposing Jimin. But it was the netizens who kept digging and digging and trying to find out who the culprit was, and that was actually what caused Jimin's initial cancellation. Of course, Mina eventually became more aggressive and ended up directly attacking Jimin. But Netizens played a huge role in that as well, because we not only egged on someone who was obviously emotionally unstable, we were also the ones who gave her words real power. Netizens just blindly believed everything she said and jumped to the most ridiculous conclusions without listening to both sides. And you know what that's called? Cancel culture. Honestly, I think that this is an issue that extends beyond AOA. Sure, Mina's situation might be over, but this isn't an isolated incident. I mean, we've seen this happen before and we're gonna see it happen again. There will always be fake accusers and exaggerators out there. If it isn't Mina, it's going to be someone else. So in my opinion, the only way that we can prevent unfair cancellations in the future is if we change the way that we respond to rumors and accusations. But of course, these are just my personal thoughts, and I know that there are a lot of different opinions out there. Like I've heard some people who are for cancel culture say that we should always believe the victims first, and that it's better to believe the victims rather than to believe a potential perpetrator. And I guess I can see where they're coming from as well. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know your take on this story in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And lastly, don't forget to check out Rosetta Stone using the link in the description. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!